So, between gods and humans. They do good deeds. They are originally aristocrats, so which means that they're kings, part of upper society. These are really important people. Although, uh, in some of our more modern epic stories, we also have uh, heroes that are not aristocrats. And I like to sort of compare and contrast the idea of Bruce Wayne, very rich, very wealthy aristocrat in Gotham, who is Batman, but you also have Peter Parker, who's sort of a nobody, but happens to be this epic hero we call Spider-Man. And so we can see how we relate to the idea of an epic hero not needing to be aristocratic. As a matter of fact, being someone who has nothing, and perhaps as of late the most popular is Harry Potter, who is an orphan, who spends the first few years of his life living in a cupboard and really has nothing. Uh, so very common. And I think that that sort of appeals especially to the American psyche, you know, with the American dream being that we come, uh, you know, that we can, we can all succeed. We can all come to this land of opportunities and with hard work can succeed. And that a hero is more based on the actions than based on, you know, what class you're born into. Okay. They experience pain and yet they persevere. And we'll see examples of that over and over again. Okay. They sacrifice themselves for others. They are confident, supremely so. And they are known not only for their brain, but also for their brawn. So both being clever and strong. And we particularly see this in Odysseus. This is how he is different from almost any other hero um, until his, you know, b before his time. Uh, he really stands out because he was favored by Athena, the goddess of wisdom, and he very often used his brains to get out of situations. Unfortunately, his hubris, meaning his pride, got him into worse situations. Uh, so, you know, that's a, a, another lesson that we will learn from the Odyssey as we begin reading. We'll get back to that over and over again. You know, hub, uh, hubris and Odysseus' uh, overwhelming pride. So here are some literary elements to discuss in Epic. We're going to talk about the heroic or Homeric simile, and heroic and Homeric are interchangeable. We're going to talk about an epithet, what is an epithet, and uh, I'm also going to bring up the idea of an alter ego. Okay, so let's start with the Homeric simile. Definition, an extended comparison comparing hero heroic events to everyday events. So the reader relates to and understands the story. And uh, today, and I always bring it back to movies, but if you think about movies, we have incredible technology to really illustrate the amazing events that some of these heroes do. You know, if you look at uh, the movie Matrix, where he can stop time and stop bullets in space, and you know, you look at the Superman flying through, you know, flying through the skies, flying to different planets. Uh, we can see that now, but at the time when it was storytelling, it was sort of much harder. It really was to perceive some of these heroic acts that they that were were done. So here's a classic example. Okay, when preventing an arrow from striking Menelaus. She brushed it away from his skin as lightly as when a mother brushes a fly away from her child who is lying in sweet sleep. And obviously the arrows are being compared to the fly and what it is to brush away a fly. That's what it was like for, you know, this arrow coming toward Menelaus to be brushed away and Menelaus would be compared to the child who is lying in sweet sleep. And notice again, sweet sleep, alliteration, uh, you know, never can we forget poetry. It comes back, the literary and poetic elements come back again and again and again. An epithet. This is a lot of fun, and uh, if you recall, I had you in class create your own epithet. So it's a word or a phrase used in place of a person's name. It's a characteristic of that person. And here are some examples, okay? So in the 80s, we had the material girl, and that was uh, what people called Madonna because she sing a song about her being a material girl. Uh, Miss Know-It-All, this might be used to describe Hermione Granger. She 
knows all the answers to all the questions in all of her classes. Great eyed Athena, and I put this one in here so when we're reading the Odyssey, you recognize it because it'll you'll see it over and over again huh? that she's referred to the great eyed Athena, which means like her eyes were, I guess, like flashing or sparkly or something like that. The pale skinned ones, I put this in here because again, I'm trying to show you how this is being used in modern times, and they refer to the Cullen family from the story twi from the Twilight series as the pale skinned ones over and over again. And Sir Eats a Lot, that was uh, one of the students in my class and he said that he wants this to be his epithet because he's always hungry and so uh, I put on there um, Sir Eats a Lot. Alright, uh, so let's take a look at how good you are at remembering epithets. We have Batman's epithet and he is the Dark Knight. Superman's epithet referred to the Man of Steel over and over again. They'll have these. And uh, I also decided, you know, let me take a vote. And I put out some epithets for myself and I had the students vote. And uh, you guys were so gracious because, uh, you know, of the different epithets you could have voted for me, um, the number one choice in the end was the Man of Brilliance and Beauty. And, I, you know, I just want to say thank you because I really appreciate that compliment. Uh, you know, and uh, and really, you're all of impeccable taste uh, to find me a man of brilliance and beauty. Uh, the second, number two, what came in second place uh, was the humble pedagogue, uh, which means the humble teacher. Uh, so obviously, this is a joke of two epithets I created for myself, but uh, just to show you, you can have some fun with this. Finally, the alter ego. All right, definition: a spiritual or psychological reflection of a hero's best qualities. And it's the other self played by a hero. So Bruce Wayne, for example, equals Batman. Peter Parker, he equals his alter ego, Spider-Man. And uh, the one that's always a little different, which is interesting, is Superman. His alter ego is Clark Kent. And the reason he's a little different is because these other guys pretend to sort of be superheroes where this superhero has to pretend to be a normal guy um, and you know we'll, we'll talk about who's got an alter ego in the Odyssey as we read along